Hello! In this uh, web lecture I will derive the relationship between the injection of minority carriers, electrons, in a p-injection in relation with the externally applied voltage. The relationship between the biasing voltage of a p-n diode and its current. In my previous YouTube videos I described the basic operation of the PN junction. Here I will derive analytically with equations the relationship between the injection of minority carriers, for example electrons from the N type to the P type material with respect to the externally applied voltage. So in this diagram which you can also find in my previous videos, we have the PN junction. What happens in a PN junction when we connect an N-type material with a P-type material? So this is the depletion region, where in thermal equilibrium there are no uh, <coughs> mobile uh, carriers, holes or electrons, but they are only immobile ions. Positive charge ions and negative charge ions. Now, these positive and negative charged <coughs> ions create a built-in electric field. And this built-in electric field balances between two forces. The diffusion force for electrons, which is from N-type to the P-type material, and the electrical force due to the uh, uh, built-in electric field in the opposite direction. So the drift currents. And this, this is balanced in thermal equilibrium for both electrons from the n-type to the p-type and holes from the p-type diffusing into the n-type. So in thermal equilibrium there will be no current, which means that the electron current due to diffusion in this direction must be exactly equal to the electron current due to drift in this direction. For the holes, you just inverse the picture. So for the electrons, we said that this current and this current should be balanced, because in thermal equilibrium we don't have a current through the p-n junction. So I can write that the diffusion current due to electrons, so diffusion current, plus the drift current due to electrons is equal to zero. This is the condition for thermal equilibrium. Now, what is the diffusion current? It is uh, the diffusion constant uh, times the gradient of the concentration. So. N is the concentration of electrons, so the N dx will be the gradient of concentration, times one charge, for example Q. Now, plus the drift current, and the drift current depends on the electric field, this is the electric field, the concentration of charges, their mobility, mu N is the mobility, of the electrons and the the charge. And this is required to be zero. So this is the basic equation for this thermal equilibrium. I can cancel the charge of they are here and I can express this equation for the electric field. So then I'll have that the electric field is equal when this goes to the other side I'll get a sign minus then the diffusion constant dn divided by the mobility this comes in the denominator 1 over n this is the uh, concentration of electrons and uh, I'll have dn divided by dx and this is it now, this is the expression for the built-in electric field. Here I can use 
the Einstein formula for the relationship between the diffusion and the uh, energy KT, the thermal energy. And the Einstein relationship, Einstein relationship was dN divided by mu is like KT divided by Q. KT divided by Q is the thermal energy uh, voltage, which we can write simply as the thermal voltage. So I'll substitute this expression in the place of dN divided by mu i. And then I have the expression for the electric field, for this electric field, equal to minus the thermal voltage, Vt, times 1 divided by n, 1 divided by the concentration of carriers and their gradient, Vx. Now, this is an important equation, and I will use it in the following way. I will connect now my externally provided bias voltage VA. So, this voltage with this direction positive to the p-type and negative to the n-type will basically subtract from the built-in voltage in the junction, which is due to the built-in electric field. So now I have the expression that the total voltage that I have in the junction will be the built-in voltage minus the biasing voltage external VA. Now this voltage will be the integral of the electric field that I have here and I have to integrate this electric field from point minus xp to xn, to this point, dx. So, I'll put the expression that I derived here. I have a minus sign here, and I have a minus sign here. So, they will cancel each other. Vt is a constant, so I can put it in front of the integral. This is the thermal voltage. And then I have an integral from minus xp, to xn of 1 over n dn divided by dx dx. dx will cancel with this dx. So I'll solve this uh, integral now. Vbi minus Va. This Vt will come here as dividing Vbi minus Va. And now, integral, I have here integral 1 over n dn. So, the solution of this is logarithmic function of ln n. And then I have to evaluate this from point xp to xn. What does this equation say? This says that the effective voltage which I have in the PN junction divided by the thermal voltage is a logarithmic function which is evaluated in the boundaries from XP to XN and here the argument of the logarithmic function is the concentration so I have to consider what are the concentration of electrons at this point and at this point so if I solve this, I'll have difference of logarithms, which is actually a ratio of the values inside the logarithm. So then this is equal to the ratio between the electron concentration at point uh, Xn divided by the electron concentration at point minus xp. Yeah. Now, I will multiply this expression by minus 1 because I want to swap the numerator and denominator here. So then I will get Va minus the built in voltage divided by the thermal voltage is equal to logarithm of natural logarithm of the concentration of electrons that I have at point minus xp 
divided by the concentration of electrons that I have at point Xn. Now, let's appreciate this equation. Here, I ask what is the concentration of electrons in the n-type material. And I will use our assumption for low injection levels. The assumption of low injection levels says that the injected carriers are much less than the majority carriers, which means that effectively the concentration of majority carriers do not change due to injection. Due to, due to injection. So this is the assumption of low injection, which allows me to substitute here the concentration of electrons at this point in the uh, n-type material where they are majority with their thermal equilibrium value. So instead of this expression, I can simply write this is the concentration of electrons in the n material at thermal equilibrium. They are the majority. Due to injection, they do not change that much. Now, in this form, I'll solve now this equation. So this solution will be here exponent of uh, minus VBI divided by VT times exponent of VI divided by VT. And then I'll have equal to the ratio of the electron concentration at this point divided by the electron concentration as a majority carry in the n-type material. So I'll move this here. This is equal to this value. So let's appreciate now this equation. I built here derived a relationship between the concentration of minority carriers just at the edge of uh, the depletion region as a function of the majority carriers in the entire material in thermal equilibrium, the built-in voltage and the externally applied voltage. So now if we look closer we'll see that this expression is actually the concentration of minority carriers at thermal equilibrium. At thermal equilibrium, the externally applied voltage will be zero, so this will be one, and then what we are left is the concentration of electrons in the P material for thermal equilibrium. So these are the minority, <coughs> the minority carriers here, at thermal equilibrium. And then what I have is that I have now an expression which says which links the concentration of electrons at this point with their normal concentration at thermal equilibrium and P O0 and the externally applied voltage VA, VA divided by the thermal voltage VT. Now, I'm interested in knowing what is this concentration more than in thermal equilibrium. So then the delta of excess carriers that I inject here in the p-type material will be so at this point will be what I will have in non-thermal equilibrium, so this expression minus what I have in thermal equilibrium. So this is the delta, this is what, uh, uh, what is the difference between thermal equilibrium and non-thermal equilibrium. Yeah. And from here now I can derive the expression that my delta injected <coughs> carriers inside the pin material, electrons injected inside the pin material where they are minority carriers, 
is the concentration level as minority carriers in thermal equilibrium at P of zero times exponent V to the power VA divided by the thermal voltage VT minus one. Now, if we investigate this equation and say that the extra O carriers that are injected, so electrons here majority, injected as minority carriers in P material will create current because from here they will diffuse in the P material, they will recombine with holes. So this will create current. The more we inject, the more current we create. So exponentially injecting more minority carriers in the p-type material will lead to exponentially increasing the current that we move electrons because we move electrons from the n material to the p-material. So the current with respect to the externally applied voltage or positive voltages will increase exponentially. And this you see from this term. Now, if we go <coughs> for thermal equilibrium, this VA is zero, so this is one minus one will be zero, so we'll have zero current. We are thermal equilibrium. If we go for negative voltages VA, we in reverse biased mode, and then we'll saturate, so this exponent will become smaller, smaller, smaller very quickly, and we'll saturate to minus MPO. And this will be the saturation current 